Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents a new musical version of George du Maurier's Trilby, starring Gordon McRae and his famous guest, Dorothy Warren Show. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another memorable story with music is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and the multitude of other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, we're going to Paris tonight for George du Maurier's thrilling musical adventure, Trilby. Dorothy Warrenshold will play the title role, and I'll be the young British painter, Billy Bago. And here's Act One. And I What are you painting, Billy? You, Trilby. Now, now hold, hold your leg a little straighter. Ah, that's, that's fine. Now, that's a silly thing to do. Paint a foot on the wall? What are you doing that for? Well, because Trilby O'Farrell has the most beautiful foot in Paris. Because I can't afford to buy a canvas. <laughs> You're crazy. All you artists are crazy. <laughs> but we're happy, aren't we? Look. From my attic window, I see Paris at my feet. And all around me, fellow hopefuls. Third guard to the right, a composer. Greetings, greetings, fellow artists. Monsieur Bago. Second guard to the left, an opera singer. A votre sante, fellow genius. Ah, oh, uh, painters, sculptors, musicians, dreamers. Fellow citizens of the Latin Quarter, let's tell Miss Trivial Farrell what it's like to live the artist's life. An artist's life is my ideal The joy of living as you feel In a sky of blue There's a rainbow hue Where your dreams come true So they say An artist's life is gay and free A life of dreams and poetry It's a happy life Without care and strife while our cares go away We can paint with a dream The bright moon like a dream We can paint and we see With a smile so serene It seems, it seems While we geniuses fall in love An artist's life is my ideal The joy of living as you feel In the sky I wish I could be an artist, but I guess I haven't got any talent. All I know about is the art of laundering a shirt. Being beautiful is a talent, Trilby. Well, maybe someday I'll be an opera star and sing all those fancy songs. Now, what would you think of that? Just be beautiful. Silently beautiful, Trilby. Oh, so you don't think I can sing? Oh, you can sing all right. You, you have a nice voice. The only trouble is you can't follow a tune. Oh, I make up my own tunes. That's like a painter who can't mix colors. Do you know anything about reading music, Trilby? Oh, what's music got to do with singing anyway? Just a lot of fly specks and a sheet of paper. <laughs> oh, Trilby, I love you. You know, I love you with my music. I love you with painting. With all my life, I love you. My thought of thoughts, my very inmost Oh! 
I could sing like that. For thee alone my every thought is burning. Happy my heart if good I bring to thee. in life returning I love but thee I love but thee I love but thee for eternity I love but music and all those big words. I wish I could. <laughs> but then what can you expect from a girl who works in a laundry? Oh, Trilby, love doesn't ask where you work or how many big words you know. I wish I could sing, though. I only know one song all the way through. My mother used to sing it to me. Well, sing it. In the street. Well, what is it? What do you want? Are uh, you the young woman who was singing just now? And what if I was? Wait right there. I've got to see you. Well, who is he? And what does he want? I don't know, Billy. He's a strange man with a dark beard and eyes that seem to have fires inside them. Oh, Billy. I'm afraid of him. I'm afraid. think this intrusion is peculiar, but as I was walking through the street below, I heard the voice of an angel singing. You can't be much of a musician, sir. Trilby doesn't know how to sing. You betray your own stupidity. This young woman... Trilby, is that your name? Yes. Though her voice is untrained, I can hear in it the true bel canto. Well, that's ridiculous. Trilby has a nice little voice, We but... thought the bel canto was lost forever. No singer has had it for a hundred years. But I have found it in this girl. 
What Paganini does with a violin, you can do with your throat, Trilby. Yet how do you waste this talent? Rasping out sickly little ballads? You've no right to speak like this to Trilby. Are you her husband? I will be, someday. Bride of a second-rate painter? <laughs> Look at me, Trilby. Listen to me. I am the greatest voice teacher in Europe. You will study with me. I will make you the foremost prima donna of the century. Get out of here. Let me have that voice. Let me mold it. You want me to throw you out? Very well. But kindly give Miss Trilby my car. It will be at your service whenever you choose to call on me. Adieu. Or rather, au revoir. Au revoir. True, Billy. Is it true what he said about my voice? Well, of course not. Don't you want me to have a great career? Well, he's a charlatan, a fraud, Trilby. Can't you see that? Oh, his card. What is his name? Huh? Oh, Svengali. Signor Svengali. Listen, Trilby. The melody which I play on the piano, you will sing after me. Do you understand? I understand. Listen and follow. No, you are singing like a milkmaid. I don't want to sing. I'm sorry I let you bring me here. Look into my eyes. Into my eyes, Trilby. What is it you want me to do? You will follow me as I play. Never let your eyes leave mine. Do you understand? I understand. I will bring melody out of you as a violinist draws music from his Stradivarius. I am the violin. You are the master. Now, from the beginning... Better, Trilby. Better. Project. Let the sound come forth. Follow me. My thoughts. Your voice. Trilby. Trilby, is that you? Please let me in. It's Billy. Billy. Stay there. I will attend to him. What do you want? I want to see Trilby O'Farrell. She does not wish to see you. I am in love with her. You've got to let me see her. Very well. Trilby, come here. Yes, yes, Signor Svengali. Trilby. Silence. Trilby, you do not wish to see him, do you? I do not wish to see him. And you do not love him. I do not love him. And you wish him to go away. I wish him to go away. Please, please go away. I'm sorry, Toby. I didn't understand. I won't trouble you again. Now it was my turn to stand on the street below and listen to Trilby's voice. I, I could not believe what I heard. Trilby the laundry maid was singing like a star of the Paris opera. My heart would belong to Trilby always. But, but where had she given away her heart and her song? Seem worthwhile. Well, 
We'll return in just a moment with Act Two of Trilby. Until along comes a report like one just issued by the Post Office Department. It's Cost Ascertainment Report for the year ending June 30th, 1952. Well, how much of the mail do the railroads carry? About 90% of all non-local mail is moved by railroad. And how about the economy of moving mail by rail? How much are the railroads paid for carrying the average letter? For transportation of the average letter, the railroads get about one-ninth of one cent. Besides carrying the mail, the railroads also furnish facilities for sorting and distributing letters on the train. Including what they are paid for the use of these traveling post offices, the railroads get only about one-fourth of one cent for handling the average letter. How does that compare with the cost of transporting letters by air? Of course, airlines do not provide facilities for sorting mail in transit. On the other hand, the average air mail letter goes about two and one-half times as far as one moving by rail. But for carrying it, the government pays the airlines about ten times as much as is paid the railroads for both transportation and the use of railway mail cars as traveling post offices. And it pays more than twenty times as much as is paid to railroads just for transportation of the average letter. Yes, in carrying your mail, as well as in carrying most everything you eat, wear, and use, railroads are America's best bargain in transportation. Here is Act Two of Lawrence and Lee's dramatization of Trilby... Starring Gordon McRae as Billy Bagot, Dorothy Warrenshold as Trilby, with Raymond Burr as Stengali. When I knew I had lost Trilby, I went away to the south of France and painted my heart away. I tried to forget the laundry maid, but her face seemed to appear in all my canvases, and I wondered if my face was ever in her thoughts. When other lips and other hearts their tales of love shall tell Some recollection be of days that have as happy been and do But there can be success in melancholy, for a painter anyway. It seems the world wants its artists to be sad. Customers are never interested in happy paintings. Happiness on canvas makes them uncomfortable. They want to see suffering with a frame around it. So they can say, however sad I may be, I am not so wretched as the poor fellow who made this picture. One day I heard rumors of a great new singer who had conquered the continent with her voice. But her name was a stone against my heart. Madame Svengali. But I had to know. I hurried back to Paris as quickly as I could. Impossible, sir. La Svengali's concert has been sold out for a month. 
But I've come all the way from Provence. Please, just standing room. There is no room in the hall, no space whatsoever. A thousand francs. Here, let me stand in the wings and listen. When Signor Svengali is conducting, he is very strict. Two thousand. I promise you, he won't see me. He, he won't even know I'm there. Well, stay in the shadows. Don't let anyone see you. Thank you, sir. Trilby. Oh, it is my Trilby. And now, ladies and gentlemen, with my husband, Signor Svengali, conducting the orchestra, I shall sing the jewel song from Faust by Charles Gounod. Signor Svengali, he's collapsed in the orchestra pit. Doctor! Is there a doctor in the house? A quiet, please. Kindly keep your seat. Signor Svengali will be resting in his dressing room. The program will continue. Concertmaster, will you take the baton, please? Madame, sing. Sing? We are waiting for you to sing. But I don't know how. I, I don't know how to sing. <laughs> Why am I standing on the stage? Why? You are the foremost soprano in Europe. <laughs> I'm not a soprano. I'm a laundry maid. Oh. Oh, curtain! <laughs> Bring down the curtain! Trilby. Trilby. Oh, Billy Bago, it's so good to see you. Where have you been? Oh, please, take me home. Take me home. The first thing I remember, Billy, is the sight of you running out there on the stage. Everything before that is a blank. Am I married to Signor Svengali? No longer, Trilby. He died in the orchestra pit. And that's why you think you can't sing. He hypnotized you. Dead? Svengali is dead? Yes. He was a genius, Trilby. But he paralyzed your soul to make you sing. You know, it's a glorious thing to move an audience with music. Even, even greater in art, perhaps, than painting. But a painter doesn't try to twist a soul into the frame of his composition. And that was Svengali's crime. That is what he tried to do to you. I'll never sing again. Oh, now, of course you will. The voice is yours, not Svengali's. Think back, Trilby. What was the first song you ever sang for me? I don't know. I, I can't remember. Wasn't it... Uh... Oh, don't you remember, sweet Alice Benbold? Sweet Alice 
See, my love, you can sing. No more evil spells, shadows, or blackness. And I promise you, Trilby, my love will give you greater powers than Svengali ever dreamed of. Ladies and gentlemen, lovely Dorothy Warren show will be back in just one moment. And meanwhile, our hearty thanks to Raymond Burr, Marvin Miller, and our entire company. Tonight's play with music based on George Du Maurier's classic romance was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at the same time by the American Railroads. And now, dear friends, here again is our lovely guest star, Dorothy Svengali. I mean, Dorothy Warren show. <laughs> for rescuing me, too, Gordon. You know, it's no fun singing in a hypnotic trance. Mm, wait till you see what's going to happen to you next week. We're going to get oh. caught in a flood. <laughs> well, what's the story, Gordon? Well, Dorothy, it's a grand tale of the American West by Bret Hart. And Lawrence and Lee have told the story with lyrics to the immortal music of Dvorak's New World Symphony. And here's one of the songs. <laughs> Roaring camp. Ah, you've been reading the script again, Dorothy. (laughs) Well, anyhow, you meet me in the gold mine country next Monday night, partner. If my covered wagon doesn't break an axle on the way. (laughs) Good night, Gordon. Good night, Dorothy. All aboard! Thank you, and dear friends, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next Monday night and roaring camp, this is your friend Gordon McRae speaking for the cast and the American Railroads wishing you all good night. Gordon McRae can be seen in Warner Brothers' The Desert Song in Technicolor. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroad. Now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. Tonight, the voice of Firestone features Nadine Connor on NBC.